The trip only took about 10 minutes before we landed on a private landing platform behind the huge house. I was shocked at the size of the place. It had to be nearly as big as the Play Pony Mansion was, just less perverted. Hell, the place had its own landing platform that wasn't even on the outside of the house. The carriage had to fly in a large open door that closed behind him as he landed. How much money did Solstice's parents have? I got the answer to my question about two minutes after the sky carriage left. Fairy Glitter saw me looking around the large hangar-like landing platform and towards the open hallway that led to the home itself, and said, Before you start asking about how rich we are, we'll just say this. Very. Shit, Stardust said, looking around just as amazed as I was. Being, a uh, whatever you are must pay well. Fairy Glitter started to laugh. Her laugh was annoying, for lack of a better word. Even her face screwed up weirdly, almost like she was just forcing it out. Still, it worked for her, I guess. Then she said, I'm the head, well was the head of the Enclave Secret Intelligence Unit, also known as the ESIU. It does pay well. The same goes for the businesses Cascade runs. Most of our money is old family money from my side. Cascade cleared his throat and raised an eyebrow. Yeah, she comes from a long line of near nobility in the Enclave, much like Shadow does. This house was first built by her distant grandmother, Cloudy Nights. Stardust laughed and elbowed the old buck with a wink. Married into money. Good for you, old buck. Cascade's eyes went wide with anger. What do you want, dope? Don't make me kick your ass. I love my wife and didn't marry her for money or anything like that. I was just having a little fun, dude. Calm down. Stardust said, taking a few steps back. Fairy Glitter laughed again. Okay, yeah, it's annoying. Come on inside, please, and we can talk. I'm sure you want to start working on a plan to save Nightshade, and if we can, kill Winner Throst and his sister. I'd like nothing better, I said, Then we followed them into the house. As we walked in, I got to see more of the place. I did my best to hide my awe at the large rooms and the expensive-looking furniture and art, but it was a hard thing to do. Fairy Glitter noticed and said, You act like you've never seen a mansion before. I have. I was in one only a few days ago. But it's just weird to be in one that ponies live in, is all. I said. She tilted her head a little. Your family has a big house too, though. Just as old as this one is, and funnily enough, only two doors down from here. Your family's richer than even mine. It was my turn to go bug-eyed at hearing that. Wait, really? I thought my dad's family was poor. I mean, the place I grew up in before I left the Crystal Empire was small and cheap. No, your family has money. It's just on your father's side of the family you have to earn it. When your grandparents died by the hooves of your Uncle Stryker 18 years ago, Nightshade took ownership of everything. If he hadn't married your mother, he probably would have stayed living in Stratus or at your home in Nimbus, she said. Wait, we have a home in Nimbus, too? What the hell? I asked. Your father has property in Stratus, Nimbus, the Crystal Empire, and an apartment in Cirrus, if rumors are to be believed. When you were born, Nightshade wanted you to grow up on the ground, so he stayed in the Crystal Empire until your mother took you. After that, he moved back here, then moved between here and Nimbus while he worked his way up the ranks. She replied, you sure know a lot about Shadow's family, Stardust said. Well, I should. He's like a brother to me. Though I never got along well with Grimoire. I visited once or twice after Shadow got sick, though, back when she was still called Star, Fairy Glitter said. You even met Solstice once, though you were only about one at the time. Why don't I remember any of that? Solstice asked. You were only three, sweetheart. Fairy Glitter said. Is that why you call me Star when we first met? Normally only my uncle calls me that. I asked when we were 
finally made it to a large sitting room. Yes, that's what your dad called you at the time, even after you went missing. The name kind of sticks with you after a while, Fairy Glitter said, sitting down on a sofa with Cascade next to her. I see, I said, looking between her and Cascade. Well, enough small talk. We need to start planning how we're going to get Dad out of prison. We all never break him out of prison, Shadow. It's too well guarded, as my husband said before. It would be a suicide mission. What you need to do is save him just before he's about to be executed. Fairy Glitter said. Are you nuts? I asked. You think breaking into the prison is a suicide mission? Trying to save him while he's about to be executed is even worse. Also, wouldn't that be the time Winter Frost would think some pony would try to save him? It is, but he's expecting myself or other citizens who love Nightshade to do something about it. The thing is, he won't be expecting you. You see, the reason I needed you to come all the way up to Stratus is because you're the only pony who can do what is needed to stop the execution, Fairy Glitter said. How's that? I'm not all powerful, you know, I said. Fairy Glitter smiled, then said, You may not know this. But even though a lot of the Enclave hates you, that was because of what you did to the Cloud Layer a few months back, and again when you used that super weapon, since then your father's done everything within his power to paint the Courier in a better light. Before the invasion, more and more ponies were starting to talk about the change you would bring to Stratus. Change? I asked. What change do they need me to make? From what I can see, Stratus is a great place to live. Cascade spoke up. Stratus is a nice place to live, that's true. But just about every single family in the city has lived under the fear of the eastern cities taking over our city. And to top it off, they're also all lost a family member or friend to the Dashite program. Your father was putting an end to that before he was arrested. Right now, the citizens of our city live in greater fear because of the takeover. Winter Frost and his eastern allies have killed a few ponies already, or made others into Dashites. With the right push and the right pony, we can turn the citizens against their new leaders. So you think that pony is me? You think the courier can get all the Stratus on our side and maybe save my dad and Thundercracker in the process? I don't see that working, I said. Maybe not the courier. We need the Daughter of Nightshade to let herself be known to all of Stratus and the Enclave. You're not just the Courier, you're the descendant of Nightstalker, Lightning Dust, and Manette, Fairy Glitter said. I don't really see how that helps, Stardust added. From what I've learned, Nightstalker didn't leave the Enclave on good terms. That's true, he didn't, but he was the one who helped build it. Even if that wasn't a reason for the ponies to trust you, then the fact that you come from Nightingale's line will. And Lightning Dust was well loved. The same goes for your distant grandfather, Dwarf Star. You have a lot of history in your blood, and most of Stratus and Nimbus remembers it, Fairy Glitter said. All right, <clears throat> see how this works. How does getting the citizens on our side save my dad? I asked. It'll work. Because once you get as many as you can to follow you, the citizens will work as a distraction on the day of the execution, so we can do what we need to do. Save Greed and your father. Then kill Winter Frost and drive the rest of the Eastern Enclave out of our city, Fairy Glitter said. Fine. Let's say you're right. How do you expect me to convince all the ponies I need to before the execution? We only have two days, or less, I said. Yeah, have deal tomorrow afternoon, Cascade said. Then we don't have the time to convince them at all, I said. Oh, but you do, Fairy Glitter said, her smile growing. You see, Shadow, we're going to broadcast a message to the entire city tonight. A message that every pony will hear and see so you can tell them your story and who you are. That's insane. If you do something like that, Winterfrost will know I'm in the city. He'll find us. I practically yelled. No, he won't, because with the tech I have in my home, I can make sure it only goes to the homes where it will matter. 
Winter Frost and all of his allies won't even know about the message until it's too late, she said. Solstice sighed, rubbing her forehead with a hoof. What if it doesn't work? What happens if he finds out and decides to kill Nightshade in his shell? So, I have that covered. Don't worry. No matter what happens, Nightshade and Greed will make it to the gallows tomorrow at noon. You have to put a little bit of trust in me. And this plan will work, she replied. Then what do we do the day of the execution, then? I asked. You'll walk up and save them both. After Stardust kills Winter Frost while he's on the stage, Fairy Glitter said as she turned her head to Stardust. Our eyes went wide, then we listened as Fairy Glitter went over every single part of her master plan to take back Stratus and save my father. It took us a few hours to go over everything. Most of the time was spent with Fairy Glitter and Cascade showing me maps of Stratus so I knew my way around. I didn't like the sound of this plan at all at first, but the more the couple talked, the more I started to see how brilliant the plan was. Fairy Glitter was amazing, and had access to just about every scrap of intel in the Enclave, even with her losing her job as the head of the department. We took a break for lunch, then got back into it. It wasn't until nearly dinner time that everything was worked out, and we finally finished planning. By the time we finished up for the day, I was starting to have a good feeling about the plan. It was insane, but just insane enough to probably work. If it didn't end well, at least I wouldn't be alive afterward to feel guilty for failing my father. I got to my hooves and stretched as Fairy Glitter and Cascade went towards a large kitchen to start preparing the meal for us. So, what should we do while we wait for dinner? I asked. Not much to do around here unless you like to train and fight, Solstice said. Honestly, I feel like walking around and clearing my head. It's been kind of a stressful day. I said, stretching some more. Think it'll be okay if I wander around the house? Fairy Glitter must have heard me because she yelled from the kitchen. Feel free to look around, Shadow. Just stay inside and away from the west-facing windows. Well, there's your answer, Solstice said. There's a place to train in the house? Stardust asked. Yeah, want me to show you? Solstice said. Yeah. Use a good workout before we eat, he said, then followed Solstice. I did the same, going down a different hallway from Stardust and Solstice. I really didn't know what to do with myself, and thinking about everything going on and what happened over the past week was too much for me at the moment. So I took a look at the pictures and odd items Fairy Glitter and Cascade had hanging on the walls in the hallway. There were a lot of pictures of Solstice, some from when she was a foal, a few of her as a filly. The ones where she was a little older were kind of funny. When she was a young teenager, she must have gone through a rebellious phase. Her mane was nearly chopped off with, in some of them, and she had a look of a pure teenage dislike for anything on her face. There was also pictures of other relatives over the years. I could always tell who in the pictures were related to fairy glitter, even when they were taken with multiple ponies in them. They all had the same odd coloring on their wings, same as Solstice and Fairy Glitter had. After I got all the way to finding Cloudy Nights, something started to nag at the back of my mind. I couldn't quite put my hoof on it, but something about the generations of Solstice's family was just strange to me. As I tried to figure out what was bothering me so much, I found myself in front of a door. Looking up at it, I saw it had a sign on it that said Office and another one under it that said Solstice Keep Out. I looked at the signs, then was about to pass by it when something deep inside me had reared its ugly head in a long time, started to force me to turn back toward the door. My curiosity was stronger at times. It was the whole reason I'd found the Mark II in the first place. For better or worse, my life had changed forever because of that feeling. Since I left my stable, I'd rarely felt it this strong. Sometimes important, that I needed to know was inside of that room. I went up to the door and tried to open it. The door was locked. I rolled my eyes and pulled out my bobby pin and trusty screwdriver and tried to pick the lock. To my utter shock, the lock turned into puffy white clouds. 
I pulled back, and they reformed into a lock and doorknob again. Tilting my head a bit, I frowned and tried again. Once again, the lock turned into clouds, then back when I pulled away. I tried touching the lock with my hooves, and nothing happened. I was about to try again when I nearly jumped out of my skin as I heard Fairy Glitter speak up behind me. You're a curious one, aren't you? She asked. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have tried to go in there. I just couldn't help myself. I said as my new heart started to beat out of my chest. She laughed that weird laugh of hers and said, Don't worry about it. You should have realized that everything in the Enclave is made of clouds. Only Pegasi and Griffins can open a lock like that. Even with your cloud-walking spell, it won't work for you. You'd need special enchanted picks to get past that lock. I looked down at my hooves. Still, I shouldn't have tried to go in. I saw the sign, but couldn't help myself. That sign is to keep Solstice out. I have a few secrets that I really don't want her to know about. Not yet, at least. Although, if you can keep a secret, you can go in, she said. Wait, you'd trust me with your secrets? I asked, a little taken aback. She sighed, then moved forward and pulled out a key. She unlocked the door and said, The only secrets in there is one that I'm surprised you haven't figured out already. Without another word, she walked into the office. I followed, asking... According to Ravain, I have something called ADD. She tried to explain what it was, but I wasn't paying attention. So what do you mean? I stopped as I saw an entire wall in the room was covered. And I mean completely covered with pictures of Stardust. Stardust is a foal in Stable 97. Pictures of him with Hailstorm practicing fighting. More of Stardust learning to shoot. Others with him and his friends in the stable. There were even a few of Stardust since he left the stable in the Wasteland. They all looked like they'd been taken from high up and far away. All the pictures were amazing and would have been a little creepy if I didn't see the only picture on the desk that was in a beautiful silver frame. It was a younger fairy glitter and cascade in what looked like a hospital. In her hooves there was a tiny light gray colt, newly born and swaddled in blankets. His eyes were open a little and I could see pink. He had a little tuft of mane on his head, and it was as blue as a sapphire. The one wing poking out of the blanket, where I could see it, that had blue tips. I looked over at Fairy Glitter and saw tears on her face as she looked up at the pictures of Stardust. Stardust's your son? She was holding back sobs, I could tell by the shaking of her shoulders, but she managed to nod before saying, Yes. And he's the whole reason I started rebelling against my government. He's the reason I sent my brother to Stable 97 once I found out what really happened to him when I was told that he died. She sniffed, then pointed at the picture of the newborn Stardust. I was told that he got sick an hour after the picture was taken. The next day, I was told that him and a few other fools had died. The news crushed me and nearly drove me insane. Does Solstice know? I asked. Heavens no, she said. She knows that she had a brother and that he died, but not the whole story. I never thought Stardust would ever make it through the program, but when he did and he escaped, I knew that he had to make his own life. So, I never told my daughter about her brother. Same for Cascade. Until today, that is. We're the ones who named him Stardust. I'm surprised they kept it. You've been using your influence in the Enclave to keep him safe, I said. How did you get all these pictures? A lot of them are from when he was still in the stable. The rest are all faraway shots. I was able to hack into the security systems for Stable 97 a few times, and I used their surveillance systems to capture still shots of Stardust. The others were taken from different MAS EBS towers all over Equestria. They have cameras high up and can be used to spy on ponies from time to time. That's how DJ Pony and other ponies uh, know so much about what's going on in the Wasteland, I think. As for Pegasi like myself, it's easy to access them if I need to, Fairy Glitter said. This was information that could be useful in the future. But as of right now, it didn't matter as much as the fact that Stardust was home. I finally looked back at Fairy Glitter and said, 
You have to tell him. Tell him what? She asked. Still tell Stardust who his family is? No. He doesn't need to know. He's happy and has his own life. He doesn't need the knowledge that his mother knew where he was for the past twenty years and never tried to save him. I'd rather him never find out who we are and just keep thinking that we're just the old rich couple who's helping you all out with overthrowing Winter Frost. And the knowledge will hurt him. You'll hate us. I don't agree, I said, feeling the normal anger building inside me as I looked at the older mare. He's strong. He'll be fine. Honestly, he'll be happy to know because I know for a fact that one thing he wants to do once everything is over is find his parents. He wants them to know that he's alive and to meet them. He deserves to know that he has a mother and father, an uncle, a sister, especially the sister part. He'll probably tease the crap out of Solstice if he gets the chance. Goddesses know she deserves it sometimes. She snickered a little at the last part and then sighed. No, it's not your place to decide that, Shadow. That's between myself and my husband, who I'll talk to about this when I can, she said. I glared at her. I don't like secrets being kept from my friends. Actually, I fucking hate them. If we didn't have a mission to complete tomorrow, I'd march right to Stardust and Solstice and tell them the truth. They need to know. There's no way I can change your mind, Fairy Glitter asked. Nope. So either you tell them the truth, or I'll do it, I said, turning back towards the door. Shadow, wait, Fairy Glitter said coming to block the door. I waited as she looked at me nervously. Let me talk with Cascade tonight about everything, and I'll try to bring this up to them tomorrow. Fine, I said, then walked out, slamming the door behind me as I headed back towards the living room, thinking to myself, unless I tell them first because I don't believe you. <laughs>